I'm Jacinta Cunahan and you're watching Coast Community News 5 at 5 October 9th. It's been a big week for finances both nationally and right here on the coast with the federal budget released this week and the Central Coast Council stating it was in serious financial distress. Let's start by going to David who has a breakdown on both of these issues. Thank you JC. Now hang with it. These are big important issues and I know a lot of you scroll through this but there's a reward to all of this. Central Coast Council has advised the Office of Local Government that it has a serious financial situation and faces an immediate and serious liquidity issue, aka cash flow. Council announced on Tuesday that a review of the budget revealed that its position had deteriorated since March 2020. The deficit reported back then was 41 million. It is now expected to increase to 89 million. As a result, Minister for Gov uh, Local Government Shelley Hancock has instructed the Office of Local Government to appoint an independent financial expert and a human resources advisor to ascertain Council's true financial position and identify options to address the issues as quickly as possible. The Mayor and CEO have remained tight-lipped about this situation, preferring to wait for the outcome of the investigations. CEO Gary Murphy and senior executives have been reportedly undertaking meetings and conferences with key stakeholders over the past few days. The outcomes being the establishment of a 100-day action plan to recovery, a forensic audit will be undertaken of Council's finances, changes to management spending delegations and other cost savings initiatives. However, the CEO has also stated there will be no change to our full-time equivalent staff but a review of the contracted and temporary workforce is now underway. Keep an eye on our website to follow the story as it develops from our senior journalists, Marilyn Vale and Terry Collins. Now, nationally, this week's long-awaited federal budget has been hotly debated around the country and here on the coast. The general consensus exists that the enormous economic stimulus measures outlined by the Treasurer, Josh Frydenberg, are necessary to dig the economy out of the first recession in 30 years. The coast's business community has welcomed a raft of measures aimed at getting people back into employment and offering more support to business. But some are saying incentives to employers to hire a, a people aged under 35 are leaving many coasties in a dire situation, with job seeker coronavirus su supplements set to expire on December 31 and job keeper payments to cease after March next year. The Association of Independent Re Retirees said retirees are partly or fully fund, who partly or fully fund their own retirement have been overlooked and the Australian Nurses and Midwifery Foundation said the budget provides too little investment in nursing and midwifery and even less for aged care. But taxpayers, road builders and home renovators were among the big winners with the government to bring forward its second stage of tax cuts uniquely backdated to June this year. The tax cuts are estimated to leave people earning $45,000 per annum $1,000 better off and people earning more than $90,000 with $2,500 extra. A broad critique of the budget is its lack of support for women in general, ranging from childcare, superannuation and casualised employment practices, all of which disproportionately affect women. We spoke with Executive Director of Women on Boards, Claire Braun, about this earlier today. The federal budget um, was very much one that was focused on high-vis and hard hats. So, i.e. recovery led through the construction, energy and manufacturing sectors. It probably didn't give as much as it could to the services sector, which as we know has been the har hardest hit by COVID. And the importance of that is that the services sector is one that employs more women. So arts, administration, those types of things too. And so when you've got a sector that um, I suppose is gendered and the impact is gendered, then I think the recovery needs to be gendered too. And for the record, the federal budget deficit blew out to 86 billion last financial year and is predicted to hit 200 and 14 billion in this financial year 2020-2021. As a result, Australia's net debt is forecast to climb to over 700 billion or around 35% of GDP and this year and peak at an eye-watering 1 trillion dollars over 45% of GDP by June 2024. Well, that's it. Thanks for not scrolling. Thanks for that, David. 
On to other news, a boat owner from Tascot is calling on Central Coast Council to look into boats which he says are illegally mooring long term at visitor berths on the Brisbane water at Gosford. Hernan Rotto said he has seen boats at the same berths for more than four months, some of them being very sea un- unseaworthy. Sorry. He said many private boat owners were unhappy with the situation and council should be accountable for a public asset being occupied. An initial request to Council for comment led to a referral to Marine Rescue Central Coast, which Council said was responsible for the boat moorings. First home buyers may need up to four months longer to save for a deposit compared to a year ago, according to a report by Domain released recently. However, the decline in housing affordability appears to have been offset by more recent post-COVID price falls in many areas, falling mortgage interest rates and government incentives such as the first home buyer grant. For young people, the seemingly unreachable goal of owning their first home might therefore be suddenly a little bit closer to reality. According to Darren Hooper, General Manager of Central Coast Unity Bank, it is still very important amidst all the excitement for young buyers to educate themselves. Now is a perfect time for first home buyers. Uh, um, the stamp duty is exemption, um, so first home buyers aren't required to pay stamp duty up to a certain amount of borrowing. Um, I think it's up to about $800,000 for a purchase of a home. So, and we provide, we'll end up to 85%. So. Member for Gosford, Liesl Tesh and Senator Deborah O'Neill have joined with Mangrove Mountain residents to demand better internet connectivity for the area. Dr Christine Wade from Mountain Medicine said the surgery had been getting mail outs from various service providers telling them the area is NBN ready, but said they were not able to connect them when the time came. Wade and other community members attended a meeting on September 30 with Tesh and O'Neill who have taken the federal government to task over the issue. Now let's go to Hayley, who has more on sport. Thanks, JC. The possibility that the owner of a former La Liga football club will take over the Central Coast Mariners has come one step closer, with talks reportedly reaching final stages with the FFA. Sydney-based businessman Abdul Halu is set to purchase the club and its associated property after it was put up for sale in August by Mariners chairman Mike Charlesworth. No new details have been released as they are currently going through final legalities and FFA approvals. When speaking with Coast Community News, Halu said, We have huge plans for the Centre of Excellence with additional resources in planning, so we heavily rely on council supporting our journey. Also in separate Mariners news, coach Alan Stajic has confirmed the resigning of goalkeeper Mark Birigidi. And the stage has been set for a blockbuster climax to Central Coast Rugby Union's Premier One competition, with the Lakes to meet Terrigal in the decider. It comes after the Lakes defeated Arimba in the preliminary final over the October long weekend, 32-29. And in the State Baseball League, the Central Coast Marlins have started off the season strong, beating MacArthur 7-6. And to the weather, dropping down to a low of 10 both tonight and Saturday evening. Tomorrow will be sunny, tops of 23 with some light northeasterly winds becoming light in the late evening. Sunday will be mostly sunny, tops of 25 with a slight 20% chance of showers in the evening. Back to you, JC. Thanks, Hayley. Readers have reported a series of close encounters with bird life locally, with one woman recording this remarkable footage of a juvenile bird of prey. If you have such encounters, please report them to National Parks, the Central Coast Birders, or if injured, to Wires or Seabird Rescue. All of these stories and thousands more are available on our news website and remember to pick up a copy of this week's Coast Community News Issue number 263 and Coast Community Chronicle 209. Be sure to subscribe to our social's YouTube channel and Facebook page for updates during the week. We leave you today with an interview with Jess and Stuart from the Options Theatre in Targra. The theatre is one of the only in Australia exclusively for people with a disability. We spoke to Jess about some of the incredible programs and her new role. From everyone at Coast Community News, have a lovely weekend. My favourite thing about running classes is the diverse range of students. I have to mould my lessons so everybody has the opportunity to be involved. For example, I was teaching a lesson on focus pulling, 
and one of the students is completely blind, which required us to show him the concept of focus pulling using audio examples. Being on the, on the ground level there, being involved in the theatre company, we were involved, I was able to try and make a change and bring in some artists, bring in creative people, so that we're actually starting to untap the potential and also listen to uh, what a person with a disability, whatever that disability, has to say. Hey,